Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today, this entire video is going to be on different types of hinges and how to install them. So there's lots of different kinds of hinges available. We don't use all of these all that much in woodworking, um, but sometimes we use different ones for different kinds of builds that we're making. Now, they kind of fall into three brackets. This is sort of the exposed hinges. These are butterfly hinges or surface mount hinges. This is called a, a T-hinge, uh, sometimes called a flap hinge. A lot of these have different names, uh, but they all typically sit on top of the wood, so they become part of the look of whatever you're building. The next kind we have, these are typically kitchen cabinet uh, or maybe bathroom cabinet kinds of, of hinges. And they're semi-exposed because they'll sit on top of a carcass on one side and the door will sit on top of that hinge. So this little bit in the middle will be uh, exposed. And they come in different styles and types and colors. The third kind of hinges are, are hidden hinges or nearly hidden hinges and in this case a lot of these are what we call butt hinges and we're going to spend quite a bit more time on these. And then there's also the what we call the European or the totally hidden hinge and I've already done a video on that so we'll put the link to that so that you'll be able to see that. Uh, so we'll spend more time on these as we go on. The last kind of hinge that we want to talk about is what they call a continuous or a piano type hinge. And these come in varying lengths up to about six feet. They come in different colors. There's bronze and gold and silver and black. And you can typically cut these off with a hacksaw almost anywhere. And they're for long kinds of builds that you might be making. Uh, to speed things up, I've already made a couple of marks on here. And I'm using a pencil so that you can see them. But normally I would use my little marking tool. And we'll show you why in a few minutes. If you don't have one of these, um, this kind of a little knife works just fine. I just use these because they make a much finer point. So what we've done is we found the distance from the top and the bottom just by simply measuring the top and the bottom and typically these will be an equal distance. But the next thing we want to find, because we don't want our hinges when we get them on, we don't want them to be sitting askew like this. We want them to be lined up perfectly. And we need to do that by taking a reference point. And I always pick the first hole or holes and use that as my reference point. So what we've done here in this case, we just simply measured from just inside the center of that pin to the center of the hole. We found out that that was uh, just about a half inch. And then what we did was we set our marking gauge to that exact same distance and then we marked on there with just a slight mark and I put a pencil mark on there so that you can see those better. Now that we have a reference point, and this will be, we'll call this our door, and you could do it on either side and then transfer that information to the other side, but we'll call this the door for now. Now I'm going to take my awl, and all I have is an old broken screwdriver that I just sharpened up, and right at the very center I'm going to take that and make a hole that is now going to be my center point so that when I put the hinge on that hole will be right in the center of that hinge. Before we go any further we need to talk about screws for a moment. And if you look at these three screws I have here, this is a number eight, this is a number six, and this is a number five. And if you look at the other side of them they're all Robertson and that doesn't matter there's a, a star or a Phillips. And if you look closely at these, you'll notice that those two are the same size. And it's important when we're using hinges that we use the right size screws. Now you're gonna have to determine the length, and a lot of times these hinges come with screws, 
But if they don't, if you've bought them used or you've lost the screws, you will have to put different screws in them. And if I put this screw in this hole, and when you look at that screw in that hole. If you look at it from the side, you'll notice how it sits. See how it sits flush? It's absolutely flush. It's not sticking up. And that's the way a screw wants to sit in a hinge. It wants to be basically flush with the top of the hinge. Now if we take that one out and put the little silver one in, you'll notice that it does the same thing. It's actually sitting flush. See how that's sitting nice and flush? With the, that's where you want the screw to sit. Now when we put in a number six, watch what happens. See how it's sitting proud? And when you look at the side of it, you can see that it's sitting above the hinge. That's an improper fitting screw for this hinge. And of course this one will be way wrong. You can see how that's sticking up there like that. Uh, this one is just uh, not even close. So when you're picking a hinge, you need to make sure that it absolutely sits flush. And you may have to look around to get the right screws, but they will be available because they design these for different types of screws. Now let's go back to installing our first hinge. So the way I do it is I make that hole large enough that it will accept the screw just so that you can at least get it started in there and from that I just simply screw that one screw into place. Then you snug it down enough that there's some play in, in that. Then you can look at the hinge to make sure and it's pretty easy to line it up to make sure that it's uh, aligned squarely. The next step that I like to do, I usually just let it go in just deep enough to make an indentation and from there I can put the next screw in. And in this case I'm just going to use the silver screw and we'll just snug that down and you'll watch that hinge won't move because that's right in the center. See that? That hinge didn't move in there. Now that's good. And of course we'll do, we would do the final one here and do the same thing by drilling the hole. But now we need to transfer that to the carcass because this is our door here, this is our carcass. I like to use a thin piece of veneer. There, so you can see that is in there. Now depending on whether you have marked this or whether you, uh, on, on the situation, you might be able to just simply drive a screw into it that way and finish them up, or drive a, a drill into it that way and, and finish it up that way. But when you get finished and pull that out, you will have a beautiful thin line all the way up and down and of course the reason we want that little gap in there is if the wood is, is, if you put the hinge on with the wood right close together like that, if the wood expands at all, if it draws in any moisture it expands, the door doesn't close properly. So that's why we like to have just the tiniest little bit of a hole in there, a little bit of a slot going. Before we get on to installing butt hinges, let's have a quick look at these little center finding drill bits. If you look at these, if you're not familiar with these, these are, if you look at the very end, you can see that it's there's a countersink in the end, and inside there is a little drill bit. And the purpose of these is to be able to go into a countersunk hole like there is on hinges, and the drill will go through and make a, a drill hole, but it will make it exactly in the center of the hole. And these things are marvelous for installing hinges because they help you center the hole so that when you get the hinge installed that it doesn't move around a little bit. They come in a variety of sizes and they're very simple to use. 
Most of them will come with little windows like this. The purpose of the windows is to allow wood chips out, but very often the wood chips get caught in there. Uh, so it's good to stop every uh, a couple of uh, screw holes or so and make sure that you've got the chips cleared out of there. You might need to put a little piece of wood in there to, to clear them out. Um, otherwise, if you don't, you'll have to undo them and take them apart and clean them because the otherwise the drill bit gets caught inside them. So The most popular butt hinge is actually a door hinge. Probably all the doors in your houses are butt hinges and they're what we call removable pin and in that case it's so that you can take the door off for adjustments or painting or something. Um, you can also get door hinges that are fixed but most of them have removable pins. Most butt hinges you can get with either removable pin or fixed pin and it will typically say on the package if you're buying it in this case it's a non-removable pin and that's the most popular. Now the other thing about um, sizes of of butt hinges for example they come obviously longer and shorter but even in a fixed size for example you can get different widths and what we're looking at here is the distance from the center of the pin to the edge of the uh, the edge of the hinge and you can see that this one is just a little bit bigger so there's a variation you'll have to watch that when you're buying hinges some hinges are narrower in here and some are a little bit longer so it's just something to be aware of. The nice thing with butt hinges is you can put them on as exposed hinges like we just talked about uh, but in most cases butt hinges will actually go between uh, if this is a door and this is the carcass they'll actually go in between and the gap is a little bit wide here right now because we haven't done any recess but we're going to do that in a minute but the reason I'm showing you this is because these hinges in a closed position look like that and I want to talk about one more time about the screws that go into these. Remember we talked about in the exposed hinges how they want to sit flush and you can see how that one's sitting nice and flush in there. This screw actually came with this brass hinge. Now the reason that you, it's even more important with a butt hinge that the screws be the right size because watch when I put two, this is just the next size bigger, put the screws in now when it goes into the closed position watch this look at it can't it can't go it can't close enough it's there's the gap is too wide in there see when these are closed these want to sit that screw out of there they want to sit parallel like that the first thing we want to do, just as we did with the exposed hinges, is we want to find the distance. And in this case, it's it's, it's just a lesson, so, uh, and you could use this knife. I'm using my little marking knife with a, the sharp edge on it. And all you want to do is find a, a space. And I'm just going to put it arbitrarily anywhere and just put it just a, a little bit of an indentation there. Now, we could use a pencil just so you can see that. So... I'm just doing that. Then I'm going to take my square and I'll do it, I'll flip it around so you can see it. And what I want to do is I'm going to make on that just a mark across. And it won't be as long as the hinge and I think you might even be able to see that. Now the reason that we like to use this, two reasons, it gives us a more accurate mark but also at some point we'll be using a chisel to take this out and if you drag the chisel along you can feel it actually hits. It comes along and it will fall into that hole. So it's a it's a good way of marking a place for your chisel to fall into. Now now that we've got a width or, or a starting point we'll also be making another one at the other end and we can do that just with a tick mark 
and then make a, a small just a small mark now in theory that should be end to end and now we need to cut the width and here's how we find the width is we take a marking gauge and this is really easy for butt hinges one of the reasons butt hinges are so popular and we take now often people will measure to the middle of the pin uh, I like to measure more towards the inside of the pin and find a mark right about right about there and we'll tighten that down I think that's good and now what that's going to do is that's going to give me a line because we've got a nice straight line on that kind of a hinge remember when we did the butterfly hinges we didn't have a nice straight line but we do now so now I can take that and I can touch that right down to the start and drag that yeah it's wobbling drag that all the way along there's a nice straight line I went too far but you get the point I'm working backwards here and again we have a hole that the chisel will fit through on both sides and what we want to do now is join those lines up on both sides and we'll do that we can do that with the square and you don't even need to punch that you can usually just mark that in there and in there now that the next thing to do is to check to make sure that your hinge will fit in there and that's where the hinge will fit now the next thing to do of course is to dig this out and I'll be honest with you I almost always just use a chisel and I will make several cuts I'll, I'll actually bang it all the way along and about a quarter of an inch or so all the way along and make indentations and I'll make them just below the surface and then I'll cut out each one of these the reason I don't like to do the whole thing is depending on the grain of the wood sometimes it'll gouge down or it'll gouge out uh, but if you do it this way it'll only take little bits and you can get a nice even uh, bottom on it but the other thing that we can do is we could also use our router in this case I've installed an up spiral bit but it's flat on the bottom and it's really simple when you use a router to route out and get a nice flat bottom on there take your uh, your hinge and if you can see if I can get it at the right angle there you can actually see that you can use your hinge as the depth gauge and what you would do now is of course plug it in and you could do it by hand you can make a jig to do this but what that will do is give you a nice flat bottom in which to put the hinge on so now you've got it sized top to bottom you've got it sized with your marking gauge on the edge and all you need to do now is take that down and basically we want to take it even with the the width of the hinge now you might depending on your hinge you might want to take it less because you see that gap in there depending on how far you want the wood to be apart your door how far you want your door to be apart you might want it to be a little bit closer in which case all you need to do is make those slots a little bit deeper so that's how easy it is to install butt hinges well that's our quick little look at installing hinges different types of hinges and how to install them and just some of the things that I've picked up over the years I know the first hinges that I put on were terrible uh, but over the years you learn how to do it and other you pick up tips from other people these are just the ways that I do them. Other people may have completely other methodologies. There's no right way or wrong way of installing hinges as long as they get put on properly and they work properly. That's really all that counts. 
We ask you one more time, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we ask you to do that. We ask you to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and as I've said in the past, uh, it, it is important to us. We ask you to like us on Facebook because it's one of the few ways that we have of being able to uh, expand our audience and help other people find some of the solutions that they're looking for in doing their woodworking. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thank you for watching.